change 88 to 07. <laughs> Why don't we change them to 08, Fig? Then we can just leave the second eight and only have to change the first eight to a naught. It'll be easier then. Oh. You hear that, Mum? See, I've trained them all. Well worked out, Charlie. He's approaching genius, Richard. Another few years, he'd be just like you. 1988, jelly Taiwanese rabbit meat. What if someone got ill eating it, Fig? What if someone died? Well, you didn't, did you? Well, no, but I could only get half a tin down. No, i take more than a bit of dodgy, jellied rabbit meat to kill anyone from Company All Boys. Their digestive systems have been hardened by generations of eating crap. <laughs> I think battered sausage is the healthy option round here. My grandmother used to eat sop. What's sop? It's a bowl of tea with stale bread in it. <laughs> she used to eat it with a soup spoon. I can see her now grinning a gummy grin with a piece of sodden bread hanging from her chin. She was a lovely woman. She used to smoke a pipe. <laughs> she always smelled of tobacco and pee. I can't imagine why your granddad ever married her. He might just as well have hung around betting shops and men's urinals. He did that too. He got arrested for it. <laughs> They let him join up and go to the Western Front instead of prison. He got gassed on the song. He told me he enjoyed it. <laughs> Mrs Cole said we can go to her house on Saturday to watch I'm a Celebrity on her telly. Oh, fantastic. Well, what about me? What am I going to do? We can only get rubbish channels on his telly now. Could read a book. Ah, it's not the same thing, is it? You were quiet tonight, Hoffman. Depressed he is. No, I'm not. Yes, he is. No, I'm not. Oh. Yes. <laughs> what have you got to be depressed about, love? Well, I'm... terrible thing, depression. <laughs> I got so depressed in strange ways once I couldn't get out my bunk for five weeks. What was you depressed about, Fig? <laughs> well, I was in prison, wasn't I? <laughs> oh, Right. Who was the famous impressionist known for his water lilies? <laughs> Rory Bremner, I reckon. <laughs> Claude Monet? Have you heard of him? <laughs> Do you heard of him, off? Off? Fancy a cold prawn boona sandwich off? Oh, peckish, I am. I wish the telly was working properly. It looked fine in the skip. <laughs> Let's go shoplifting in cheap craps tomorrow, is it? We could get some of the little glasses with the Welsh woman and the spinning wheel painted on them. No, I don't fancy it. Well, you can stay outside and keep watch. No. Are you all right, though? Uh, I'm just a bit cheesed off, that's all. What about? I'm getting on. And what have I achieved? What have I got? You got 20% shares in Richard Applewhite Global Trading Enterprises Limited. Yeah, and what are they worth? Well, nothing. Exactly. <laughs> but they're an investment in the future, aren't they? Like a pension scheme. Ha. Huh. Other people have got cars and money and girlfriends at my age. Other people have got a life. We could go to Porth Call. <laughs> go to the fair. <laughs> check out the girls with their cool hot gear. We could get the boys to come. No, it, and that's another thing. Most of the blokes around here are so thick they think that being thick is clever. <laughs> They're proud of it. Nothing wrong with being thick. Well, no, but it's chance, isn't it? It's like someone being proud of having size 15 feet or a, a big nose or something. There's nothing wrong with having big feet nor having a big nose. No, but it's nothing to celebrate either, is it? You know, you don't see someone walking into a pub and go, hey, everyone, look at my nose. <laughs> A big nose is a useful topic of conversation to break the ice when you meet someone, mind. You could say, Crikey, but where'd you get that out there? Snouts our ass? Something like that. Ah, you shouldn't have said that, Charlie. Pinocchio Woods is a very sensitive boy. <laughs> Aye, you'd be with a nose like that. You can open locks with it. <laughs> but that's what I mean, it's unimportant, isn't it? You're depressed, you are. You was depressed last year when Mylene Class did and when I'm a celebrity, remember? Aye, but I was different. I had something to be depressed about then. Now it's just... everything. 
What will we do tomorrow, then? I'm gonna go for a wander on my own. I wanna think. I wanna be alone. Oh. All right. Have a kit, but Dream about Mylene having a shower in the jungle. Oh, That'll you cheer you up. Ah. Uh, good night. Me if you want. I right. <laughs> Let me guess. Broken family, history of pathetically petty crime, dead end life. Am I right? Yeah. I see something in you. In me? I can sense you are a homo superior. Homo? Me? <laughs> homo what? A superior man. What's your name? Dwayne Hoffman. Listen, Dwayne. Some people are just above others. It's as simple as that. They are meant for better things, different things. What people is that in? Well, us. Or people like us. The intellectual. The artistic. The extremely thin. So, what's your name, then? Zoe Ashton Lyme. Sounds like a train station, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Let me buy you a cup of coffee, Dwayne. You fascinate me. Two coffees! Expressive? Aye, right away, please. <laughs> And your problem. Do you know what existential nausea is, Dwayne? Is it where you're sick and it comes out your nose? <laughs> Another working class oak for your collection, then. Let me have my fun. All right. Could be diverting, I suppose, for a few days. Dwayne Hoffman, this is my brother, Zach. All right. Yes, I see what you mean, Zoe. He's definitely one of us. Fancy a cup off? I only drink espresso. <laughs> Going as fast as I can. <laughs> There's a new celebrity chef program on tonight. What's he called, Mrs. Applewhite? Prick with fork. <laughs> and there's a good film on shooting next time as well. What is it, ma'am? It's an erotic thriller starring Helen Mirren and Ronan Keating. It's called The Paddy is the Prime Suspect. It won a golden nose in Montrose. No, oh, we'll have to get another telly. When I guess proper reception. We're on the lookout, Fig. Our eyes are skinned there. Don't you think it's sad that our lives are governed by what's on telly? Well, what else is there? Well, art and, and beauty and that. Uh... <laughs> art? Aye. What do you mean, painting and that? Aye, and, and sculptures and plays and that. I went to see a play once with my late husband, George. It was in the theatre in Ebbo Vale. <laughs> a streetcar named Desire, it was called. I've got the programme here somewhere. It was about a man who sat around in his vest. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds all right. <laughs> Funny name, mine. A streetcar named Desire. What's a streetcar, Mrs Applewhite? It's what they call a bus in America. Funny you name a bus, isn't it? Ah. And if they did name a bus, you'd think they'd call it, well, I don't know, Royston or something. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, 
Aye, but Hoffman, life would be no better if we all went to plays and that instead of watching telly, would it? Aye, it would be. Ow. Well, because telly is mind-numbing rubbish designed to keep idiots distracted. But books and art and that stimulate thought and... It's not just a bunch of people walking into rooms talking crap and having arguments and all. So, what thoughts have you had stimulated then? <laughs> well, uh, oh, come on off. Tell us what thoughts you've had. <clears throat> well, I can't think offhand like that. <laughs> you haven't had no thoughts stimulated. I have. <laughs> well, go on, tell us one then. <laughs> oh, I can't talk about it anymore. I'm going to bed. What about I'm a celebrity? I, I don't have to watch it. I am not a slave to telly. I went upstairs to listen to Radio 3. <laughs> <laughs> he is depressed. He hasn't even been choking the long neck goose of late or nothing. <laughs> a sure sign. But to miss I'm a celebrity, it's not natural. I'll get Mrs. Calls to record it, then he can watch it when he's feeling better. <laughs> Fish. You've blown a big hole in these, Richard, from Trump <laughs> over time. Well, I can't help it, can I? It's my piles. Well, you ought to pull your underpants down when you feel like you're going to trumpet. <laughs> Shut up about it, ma'am. You haven't got no sense of decorum, you haven't. <laughs> uh, are you going out again tomorrow, Hoffman? Yeah. <laughs> Me and my new friends are going to a photo exhibition in Trey OK. <laughs> in where? Triarchy. <laughs> a photo expedition? What's that? Well, it, it's where they do have photos stuck on the wall and, and you do... L look at them. <laughs> photos? Aye. Uh, yes. I can't believe that. I mean, paintings and that. Yeah, but photos? I mean, anyone can take a bloody photo. You might as well have an exhibition of buttered toast hanging on the wall. Maybe they're dirty photos, Richard. Aye, readers' wives. No, no, they're not. I saw some in a book. They're, they're people standing about now. Standing about? They're having you on, son. No. You don't understand, cos you don't keep up with the arts. Well, we can't, because the remote control for the telly's broke. Aye, but you don't, you don't watch the culture show or uh, Simon Sharma when it's not broke, do you? They're rubbish, that's why. No, they're not. <laughs> you are Philistines, you are. No, we're not. Phyllis who? <laughs> it don't matter. I'm going to go into the garden and, and have a think. Art is crap, man. Who's that bloke who'd chop horses in half and then hang them on the wall? <laughs> Damien Hurst. Any relation to Jeff? No. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> See, this is the problem. No one understands me. None of you, anyhow. I'll come with you, if you like, to the photo expedition. No. No. <laughs> Gone crackers here. First he was depressed, now he's crackers. That's how it goes. 
so it went with me anyway. <laughs> I'm going upstairs. All right, love. Poor Charlie. No. How come your Hoffman knows them two, then? They're his new friends. He's been depressed. The bright young things of the Ronda. Not hard for a confused working-class lad to get drawn into their shallow, pretentious world. Know him, do you, Sergeant Bull? I know their father. Sebastian Ashton Lyme. He's a millionaire, a businessman and a crook. Every copper in South Wales would like to nail him. But unfortunately, there's a lack of evidence. Fit him up, Sergeant Bull. Not that straightforward. He's one of the funny handshake brigade. Gays? No. I'm referring to Freemasons. Fagin had played to join them once, but he forgot the post of the ladder. He's <laughs> better off out of it. I wonder. What's Sergeant Bull? Ashton Lyme. He keeps records in his house, in his office. To explain the situation to Hoffman, do you think he'd pinch of me when he's in the house on a social occasion or something? No. No, he wouldn't do his Sergeant Bull. He wouldn't believe their dad's a crook. He's under their spell, he is. Pity. Still. Fancy a game of pool in the station canteen? Aye, all right. He's as sophisticated as a tin of baked beans, isn't he? Yes, I'm getting bored with him. Oh, dear. I'd quite like to see his gaff. Meet his motley little crew. I feel there may be some ironic pleasure in it. OK. Just for you. Dwayne, darling. Sorry, what? We'll call around your house for you this evening. No, no. Yes, yes, we want to see Shay Hoffman. We want to meet your patron. We're interested in everything about you, Dwayne. Um, we'll be there around seven. Oh, it's them. Uh, listen, I know I've been acting a bit funny lately, but please, don't go talking about being in prison or, or being an erotic dancer <laughs> or, or your man being on a game, child. Of course not, Hoffman, love. Hi, all right. It's just you always talk about them things. It's like you can't help it, can't control yourselves. Don't worry, son. Mum's a word. <laughs> oh, it's them. Uh, right. Here goes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> ah, yeah, it was. One room, eight by six. The constant dripping of the tap. The stench of the slopping out bucket. The other bloke snoring like pigs with adenoid problems. He's a sensitive being, Zach. Yes, I can see that. So, how did your career in erotic dancing develop from there, Mrs. Everworth? <laughs> I had to give it up to look after my late husband when he had a leg removed. And then Richard developed his agoraphobia, of course. He's afraid he'll get sacked off if he goes outside. <laughs> I should have imagined that that would have been a distinct possibility when he was inside, too. <laughs> no, no, the slammer was hell, but at least it had a roof. <laughs> Let's make a move, is there? Oh, don't be such a killjoy, Dwayne. <laughs> I'm enjoying our little tete-a-tete. <laughs> your friends are fascinating. How did your mother get into prostitution in the first place, Charles? <laughs> Was she abandoned penniless by a brutal husband? No, she just slipped into it, like. <laughs> she studied it and all for a bit in college. <laughs> There's a college for prostitutes. One would imagine she would have learned her trade on the job. I remember the day she sat in final exams. I had to wait in a little cafe across the road. She had practical in the morning and oral in the afternoon. <laughs> she came first in both. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's go, is it? Oh, you really are becoming a bit of a pain, Dwayne. Oh, you're reading The Outsider, I see, Charles. Aye. <laughs> hey, that's mine, that is. I'm only reading it. I don't say nothing when you read my Beano. <laughs> No. Well, what do you make of it, Charles, my man? There's no proper story, is there? 
He shoots the bloke, and then they hang him. He don't even try to escape. Funnily enough, by some quirk of coincidence, you seem to have hit the nail on the head. Our frustration at Merceau's inactivity, his inability to respond naturally to the situation he finds himself in, is what gives the book its timeless, hypnotically negative allure. Aye, I thought that and all. <laughs> You're a bright boy, Charles. Well, I'm not thick. <laughs> I read it and all. Oh, good. Richard! It's interesting, in many ways, you are a classical figure. Am I? I've always said it. Yes. You are the mysterious stranger. The Steppenwolf. The outsider himself. Uh, well, ah, ah, yes, I am, I. Only you can't go outside, Richard. <laughs> no. The insider you are, then I. Yes, the troubled existentialist, the visionary, the artist not believed, ridiculed even. Uh, well, I'm not believed, that's true. And ridiculed. Am I? People call you Elmer Fudd. They say you're not a big, a pathetic nutter, a sad case like <laughs> I am right, all right. <laughs> Who the hell is this now? It's all right. It's only me. Hey, uh, there's a posh car parked outside. You got visitors? Yes, that they're husband's new friends. Hey, uh, that posh car have been vandalised by kids. What? Oh, damn it. Damn it! <laughs> damn it! <laughs> Children. Children? Little bastards? What's the matter with you people? You live like animals. Less scores, eh? Too right. But you're not invited, sport. We tried with you, and there's just nothing there to work with. Come on, Zoe. Hang on, Zach. Dad will pay for the car. Charles, why don't you come back to our house with us? We can chill, drink champagne, and eat canapes. Eat a can of peas. <laughs> Aye, all right. Charlie. They're just using you, Charles. Just because you are not up to it, it don't mean I'm not off. Where's your mum and dad, then? They're in the hot tub outside in the garden. Oh. Wow! What a great telly! Does it work? I should hope it bloody well does. It cost over two grand. Wow. Um, where's the... Uh... Up the stairs, second on the left. You can't miss it. There's a little boy peeing on the door. Shouldn't you stop him? <laughs> Are you being serious? No. Let him do it. In case he... <laughs> At least this one's good looking. Sergeant Bull, it's me, Charlie. Ah, Sergeant, this troglodyte has dragged me from my ablutions. Uh, there's been uh, some sort of misunderstanding. 
No favors here, mate. The chickens have come home to roost. Mind your head. It's turned out nice again, Sergeant Ball. Yes. Well done, lads. Well done indeed. Ashton Lyne spilling his guts to the fraud squad even as we speak. Well, he shouldn't have ate from the station canteen. <laughs> I did warn him. Still, uh, they'll start questioning in him as soon as he can sit up. <laughs> Talking of which, these out of date Taiwanese jelly dried meat sandwiches are very nice, Mrs. Everway. <laughs> Aye. It looks like a, a, a sort of grey muck, but it tastes lovely. No. Well, it just goes to show, boys, you can't judge a book by its cover. Unless it's a cookery book. Aye, <laughs> no, then you can't, I. Or a book on model aeroplanes. Aye, ah, all right, all right. <laughs> or a book called Great Big Titties. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. You can't judge some books by the covers, then. <coughs> I'm sorry for what happened, Fig, Mrs. Applewhite. Oh, it's not your fault, son. Life is hard. The glittering jewels in the edge row are very alluring, even if they do turn out to be paste in the end. Oh, we've all had a run-in with posh people at one time or another. It's true. Earl Stanley asked me out once. Remember him, Richard? Earl Stanley? He was the baker, wasn't he? Yes, but I didn't know it at the time. I thought Earl was a title. <laughs> I only began to suspect something was not quite right when he picked me up in his bread van. <laughs> only it was Easter and the hot cross buns came in handy. <laughs> Hey, hey, Claude, why didn't you just get someone to break into the Ashton Limes house and just half-inch the files and that then, eh? Oh, we did investigate the possibility, Mr Applewhite, uh, but the house had state-of-the-art protection. You know, interconnected alarm system, CCTV cameras, trembling devices, the lot. Like Fort Knox, Sergeant Ball said it was. There's not an housebreaker in all the Ronda can get in and out of there. But impossible. Is that right? <laughs> <sighs> It's on now, in a minute, boys. Would you like to do the honours, Mrs Applewhite? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh. oh, fantastic. <laughs> Fort Knox, my arse. <laughs> my boys, my boys. <laughs> And this brand new.